Well, welcome back to What's Up with Prophecy Today. In our little video today, we're going to be looking at a simple prophetic word, and that word is C, S E A. That's where boats travel between continents, they travel on the sea. So, we're going to be looking at what that means uh, in prophecy, and uh, we'll take a look at that. Now, first off, let's look at this uh, metal man from Daniel 2. Now, this is a very familiar prophecy to many people, and the various parts of this metal man are composed of different metals uh, in uh, the head, the chest, the thighs, the legs, and the feet and toes. Now, the interesting thing about this prophecy is that the, the Daniel 2 actually explains the symbolic representation of each of the metals. And it tells what each metal represents a different kingdom. So that one is quite easy to understand what the symbolic metals mean. Now take a look at this next one. This is four beasts that are found in the book of Revelation. Now the first one is from Revelation 12, and that's the red dragon. Now we know from studying that the red dragon is really the devil. So that one is pretty easy. Now the next one here on this picture is from Revelation 13, 11. And this is the beast that comes up out of the earth. It rises out of the earth. And so the, the uh, chapter doesn't exactly tell us who that is. And then the next one is Revelation 7, 14, and that's the lamb. Of course, Jesus is referred to as the lamb uh, in a great number of places in the New Testament. And the fourth one is the Revelation 13, 1. Now, this is the beast that rises up out of the sea, and this beast has seven heads and ten horns, and its body parts are made up of different animals. Now, taking a look at Revelation 13 here again, it says that it rises up out of the sea. So what does that really mean? Well, we need some prophecy rules. We need some rules for helping us to interpret symbolic names. Now here's what I think is appropriate, and, and many people agree with this. In Bible prophecy, words in prophecy should first be examined to see if they are real. In other words, can the symbolic name that is, is, is written, could it be a real thing? So we don't want to first jump to saying that the symbolic name is some uh, strange beast or some other strange strange thing. Can the name itself be what it says it is? And the second rule is if the word cannot be real, you know, for, for example, I showed you the, the, uh, the dragon with seven heads. Well, I've never seen a dragon with seven heads. I've never seen a real picture of one. So I would assume with pretty good certainty that there is no such thing as a dragon with seven heads. So I'm going to assume when the Bible in Revelation references that beast with seven heads, that it's, a, it's appropriate to consider it symbolic. And we would uh, want to investigate what is that animal then. So let's take a look at this little uh, chart here that is put out by one of the churches. And they go through various uh, names and symbols, and they give us what they feel is the definitive uh, uh, solution or definitive definition of each one of the words. So let's take a look at this. So we see number 29, it says C. And this uh, church's definition for C is multitudes, peoples, and nations. And they, that's referenced in, uh, they use the reference Revelation 13.1 and Revelation 15.2. So let's take a look at a couple other Bible references that are interesting when it, regard, when it regards to the sea. So here's another one that says, there, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. Shall be signs. Now right off the bat, you would think signs means this is a prophecy. So here again, there'll be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars. 
and upon the earth there'll be distress of nation with perplexity. Then it says, and the sea and the waves are roaring. Well, some people want to use or explain the sea and the waves roaring as strife uh, amongst peoples on earth. But could that be just what it says it is? Could it be that there'll be signs at the end of time where the sea and the waves will be roaring? I think so. I didn't always used to believe that. I used to believe years ago that the sea and the waves roaring meant strife amongst peoples on earth. But I don't believe that anymore. I believe that means exactly what it says. So let's take a look at some interesting video here of a sea roaring. And certainly this is illustrative of how a sea can be roaring. You know, if I look up in the dictionary, Holland's dictionary for roaring, uh, it sometimes refers to a vehicle roaring somewhere, it's going very fast and making a loud noise. And, or jet taking off, making a loud noise. Well, when the waves crash on the, on the banks of the, uh, the, the ocean or on rocks, it, that is certainly roaring. So I think the idea that seas roar is very clear and that, that actually can happen. So I would put that, this Bible text here where the seas and the waves are roaring, I would put that as actual. There's actually going to be at the end of time, the seas and the waves will be roaring. So this rule that here that, that I showed you were Words and prophecy should first be examined to see if they are real before assuming they're symbolic, I think would apply in this case. So seas really do roar. So I think that phrase is an actual phrase. So let's continue on. In Revelation 13, 1, we read, And I stood on the sea, or I stood on the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads, and ten horns, and upon his ten horns, and upon his head, was the name of blasphemy. Well, this beast, with seven heads and ten horns, is definitely symbolic. The beast is symbolic. There is no beast ever on earth, a real beast. There's never been a picture of it, a video of it, no one's had it in the cage. It does not exist. This is definitely symbolic of something. And we also learn here that the beast that had one of its heads was wounded and it was healed. So you, you probably have seen, if you haven't, you should stop and go look at this videos, the videos that I've done on the beast from Revelation 13, 1. And we identified this head that was uh, wounded and uh, had blasphemous name on its head as one of the seven heads as the Roman Catholic Church. And the other six heads are various uh, religions of the world. So the question is now, what does the word sea mean in this uh, text here? And I stood upon the sands of the sea, and I saw the beast rise up out of the sea. So in this case, I th think the word sea is symbolic, because the beast is really seven global religions that rise up out of the people groups around the world. So in this case, the sea means people groups. So the, the, the beast rises up from amongst the people of the world. All right, let's continue on and look at Revelation 8, uh, chapter, uh, verses 8 and 9. And now it gets a little more interesting here. And it says, And the second angel sounded as if it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. Now you have to remember a few things here. When John on the Isle of Patmos, he didn't know anything about asteroids or asteroids hitting the earth. 
So when God uh, put him into vision and he saw this vision, and he saw this, this mountain coming down out of the sky and uh, crashing into the sea, he, he referred to it as a mountain. But in our day and age, with the knowledge that we have, we can easily assume that this is an asteroid. So I'm gonna put the word asteroid in there and, and it says, as it were a great asteroid burning with fire and was cast into the sea and a third of the sea became blood and a third of the creatures in the sea and had life and died and a third of the ships were destroyed. Well, we know from science today that when you, when an asteroid will uh, uh, impact an ocean, it takes all the oxygen out of the ocean and the uh, animals, the fish and what have you, do not have oxygen to live and the sea actually turns red and the animals die and float on the, on the top of the water. So in this case, <clears throat> I think the word sea means sea, seawater, the oceans. It doesn't mean something else. So that what it means is that an asteroid will impact the sea on the earth and animals, the fish and animals that live in the sea, they'll die and this resulting tsunami will destroy ships in its vicinity. So in Revelation 8 verses 8 and 9, I believe the word sea means what it says. It means sea. It means actually what it says. All right, let's look at another one more here, all right? This is in Revelation 4, 6. And here we read, and, it, and before the throne there was a sea of glass. A sea of glass, like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around about the throne, there were four beasts with eyes before and beyond. So here we have a little clue. Whenever you see in prophecy that something is like something else, that means that the word is symbolic. So here, I, I can't really uh, tell you exactly what it is, but it says before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. So I can imagine that around God's throne, there are many uh, beautiful, uh, precious gems and uh, sapphires and what have you. And to John in vision, he looked over the surrounding uh, grounds around the throne and it shone like glass. And he, re he referred to it as a sea of glass. In other words, it extended out and way about and around the throne. And so that's how John uh, told us what he thought, what he saw and he put it in his own words as best he could uh, in that case. Well, today we've looked at the simple word of sea. So I hope this helps uh, you understand how symbolic words work in prophecy. And we'll be covering a few others as we go along. So thanks again for t tuning in and taking a look at what's up today with the prophecy.